Hi friends, it's been a while since I've done a video and I've had a lot of requests for a little more, especially quill work videos. So I've started a new project and I thought I'd let you follow me along with uh, different procedures. So um, I got an order for a new knife sheath and the customer sent me his knife that he wanted me to make a sheath for. He requested uh, actually green and yellow and um, First, what I like to do is uh, use grid paper and sketch it out on grid paper. You can actually do this uh, to actually make your design for your sheath first and then cut that out and make you a nice, uh, a nice pattern that you can keep because you'll use them over and over again. So this, this was the pattern that fit his nice fit his knife nicely so um i used that drew a drew a rough design on it that i will follow and um the next step is uh lay your brain tan out and i like to go to um the edge where i feel it's just about the right thickness but you don't want it all wrinkly or anything well sometimes edges can be that way and uh go ahead and lay your Lay your pattern out. Remember, this would be the back of the pattern, so you have to have a back and a front. And um, I'll determine probably right to there where the front will be, and only cut, only draw and cut that out to begin with. All right. Um, I've decided. I've laid the knife on the sheath, and I'm going to. I'm going to make it probably this long because let me see if you can see that right to here on the front because I'm going to fold that down for my top and that will bring it right to here since he's using it for a belt knife I think that's going to give it uh, maybe make it a little taller than I normally would for a neck sheath so I'm going to go ahead and lay it lay it next to the edge Somewhat. I like to leave a little bit of room in case I need it um, when I'm trimming. And just take an ordinary pen will work fine. And if you have a nice stiff pattern, you just go ahead and trace around it. See if you can see that. Making it pretty easy. Come up around this side here. Kind of in your way. But just like you trace around anything, it's real simple. It's going up to here. There we go. I'm going to square that off with my little T-square. I can even it up later if I have to. Because that looks a little crooked. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that out. I'll go ahead and cut that out with a pair of good scissors. Um, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, as you can see, I've cut that out with a pair of scissors. And a real handy little hint is, um, this is painting, painter's tape that comes off easily, but it's pretty, pretty sticky. A lot of coil workers, including myself, like to take the painter's tape and tear you off a nice section and we'll go ahead and stick our quill work on there this really helps yeah you know, get it nice and square this really really helps a lot um, to keep it from stretching and pulling and doing all kinds of things that soft brain tan likes to do so you want to um, make sure I think I'm going to put another piece right here and even though you have some sometimes some knots and things on the back of your quill work when you're done the tape will pull off real nicely okay I'm going to go right there again reinforce that real nice let me see. 
That's probably all right there. I'll stick a piece on there. I don't know if I'll need it. Because there's nothing worse as to be quilling along and have that leather start to twist and bend. And then when you're done, everything's super crooked. So let's see. I'm having to try this. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the um, quill work. I have uh, started using some different colored threads just so uh, it just gives, a, to me, a nicer finished product. You don't have to, but... Um, and sometimes the, just the colored cotton threads look, look real nice or silk. I'm going to go ahead and cut me off... Uh, probably about two and a half, two and a half feet, and get it threaded up. Okay, and I uh, always like to wax the thread, keeps it together longer, makes it last, so you're not breaking your thread. You might occasionally want to redo it as you're quilling, too. Uh, or it'll start to fray. Okay, now you don't have to put a knot in it. I prefer to put a couple knots in the end. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here. Maybe not real quick. Okay, that's one. Now you'll need two. Two for the zigzag. Let's go ahead and pull off another two and a half, something like that. And I usually just use a sharps needle, just something that's just a nice sewing needle. Sometimes I use a larger needle if my hands are giving me a lot of problems. I find it easier if if you don't have arthritis in your hands, you can probably get away with a nice, tiny little needle. But let's go ahead, and then we wax that. We're going to go ahead and get a couple knots in here real quick. And as you can see on the pattern, I used my, I used my little T-square marked with ink pen down the center, little dots. Then it came out about a half a centimeter on each side gives a real nice width for quill work. You, um, depending on your preference, but I like a, about a half a half a centimeter on each side. Okay, now we're going to get started. I've got my quills soaking in water. They've been probably in there about an hour. Those green verdigris, the copper dye. Those quills kind of finish out um, after they're dyed. They're a lot harder, like crisper, so they almost need to be um, in a little longer. You can come, okay, get back to this. You can come from the top and start your project like this. And go ahead and trim that off. Or you can, you can actually come up from the bottom. It really doesn't matter underneath. But there we go. Let's go ahead and make a little back, little back loop right there by it. Okay. And I like to keep my thread to the outside. Let's move this where you can see it. To the outside of the loop. All right. Let's go ahead and um, to get started. We'll kind of leave those loops showing. And we'll go ahead and. Make another little back stitch. And as you can see, I'm going to keep my needle to the outside. Okay? Now I've got that. Let me pull that through real quick. Because I wasn't paying attention. And I was over... To the end, we just we're going to do the first row, not the whole top. 
first one row and then the next row. So, alrighty, let's go over here. There we go. Now. That can happen. Okay, I'm kind of hurrying to get us going here. I'm making a mess is what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and straighten this all out. And I'll slow down. All right. There it is. Yeah, take your time. Don't hurry like I was trying to do. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead, pick out a nice quill to get started. I like to trim mine as I go along. Cut off the both ends. Okay, let's go ahead and flatten that. I flatten mine right in my fingernails. Because at the end, I like to take my Jim Hayes quill flattener. made a copy of our, an original and then you'll flatten them all anyway so let's go ahead let's go ahead and lay this in just with the first yeah the first side and tighten that nice with a good tug then we're going to go ahead and put it through the other side and give that a tug get everything nice and square for you to get started all right, now, now that we've started, we want to fold that over nice and neatly. Pick up your first thread on the left, and I am left-handed for all you lefties. Now, I like to keep my fingernail right at the edge, and it help, really helps me keep a nice straight line. See that? I'm going to pull that through, but I am going to go to the outside of the, the loop, okay, of the thread. Same here. I'm going to fold that over real nicely. And see how nice of a pattern you're getting there? Lay your fingernail right on the line. Come right in on that line, and it wouldn't hurt for me to make that line a little darker. Go right along your fingernail. Go to the outside of your thread. I need to trim that. Flatten it down, pull it nice and snug. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one when I started it. it. Seems to be getting in the way. Okay, I'll show you a couple more times and then we'll then we'll resume when I put the yellow in them. Okay, okay, there you go. Lay it right nice and neat. Flatten it down. Fingernail right on the line. Come over the top. Give that a real nice little then back out to the outer edge. Okay, let's do it one more time. And um, I might as well just stay on here until I show you how to put a new quill in, and then we'll then we'll resume with a different color. But fingernail right on the line, little back stitch. Go ahead and come to the outside. Okay, let's go ahead and get another quill in here. Pick one about the same thickness. Trim off both ends. Flatten it out. Like I said, these green ones are a lot harder than other dyes. And this also, this, this copper dye, if you ever do it, it's very poisonous, so don't be putting these in your mouth. Okay, here we go. You want to pull this end up that you've already sewn down. Insert the new one under it till you get to the other end. Press that down and pull it nice and tight. 
if you have to at that time you can trim trim that off that one's about the right the right length get that end nice and nice and even once again put your fingernail on the line let's go ahead and sew that down Okay, a little back stitch. Let's, let's go ahead and bring that thread to the outside. Let's go ahead and make another another zigzag stitch. Make sure you're nice and even and straight. And it doesn't matter if your colors very with natural dyes your color should shouldn't be exactly the same that's kind of how you can tell if they are natural dyed or not so don't worry about that little back stitch come to the outside don't do that there we go okay let's do one more Okay, then I'm going to continue on till we get to the yellow, and I'll show you inserting the yellow color, which will then make a nice little yellow diamond coming into the center. Okay, you can see I have finished the one side, and now what you want to do is match this up real even to give it a real nice look. So let's go ahead and... Uh, I'll get a quill that looks to be about the same size, close to the same size. I trim it, and then I'll come back and flatten it. Okay. Now let's see. Let's um. You want to start on the opposite side and get it started. Just like before, we'll make a little back stitch staying on the line. Okay, going to the outside of the thread. Okay, make sure it gets over it. Okay. That should hold it. Let me put it in a little further. All right, here we go. Like that. All right, now you're going to start the matching. And I find it works better if you come over right where the other stitch is. Go ahead and make a little stitch. Because if you go below... If you go below the quill, your pattern will end up right below the quill. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring this over. Put your fingernail on the line. Okay, now let's go ahead again right here. You'll see the little, and you want to make a real little back stitch right where the one was on the left. Go to the outside, then fold this over there. And by doing that, those should be right, right with the others. You don't really see it closely till you get down a few but as you can see it's it's getting there make a couple more 
on the line, back stitch coming to the outside of the thread. And you want to pull pretty firmly. Come down to the keep getting out of the camera, sorry about that. Um, see right there? Right where the other one was. Go to the outside, leave your little loop. They should be matching up pretty well. Yep. Okay, I'll go ahead and um, work on this and when I get a good portion done, I'll, I'll come back. Hello everyone. Um, as you can see, yesterday I finished all the zigzag work. And if you noticed, uh, the ink kind of smeared on me. I think I had more of a um, water-soluble ink on that cheap ink pen, but I'll be able to clean that off with some soap and water, and I'm going to dye it dark anyway, so it, it won't matter. It won't hurt the outcome. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you how to do, how I'm doing line work, and uh, how to insert another quill, so... This is what I've already started doing, and what I do, I pass underneath the quill and go around to the top of the quill, over the top of the quill, and then do a back stitch. Then I'm going to go underneath the thread and bring the thread to the outside like I do with the zigzag, and then you'll pull it, not real tight, but just snug. Let's go ahead and go under the quill, over the quill, little back stitch, go to the outside, just a little snug, under the quill, over the quill, probably just about an um, eighth of an inch maybe down, makes the best looking one one I had done was a little too wide. Let's go ahead and go down till we can insert another quill. And uh, depending on what the look that you like, you can use fine quills or you can use heavy quills. Sometimes a bold, a bold line looks real nice. But on this piece I'm using just a real fine quill. Okay, let's go ahead and choose another quill and these are a little smaller than I've been using for the zigzag work now you want to pull up your last stitch insert it in right through the stitch and if you haven't trimmed your your tips off it might stick you might have to pull it on through Give a little tug under both of them to lock them in, under the end of this one and your new one. Little back stitch. And go to the outside of the thread. And your thumb might, um, you might hold your thumb on it to make sure it doesn't slip off. Okay, and then for this one you don't have to catch that the old quill. Little back stitch, go to the outside of the thread. Once again, under the quill, over the quill. And I'm drawing this left handed, but it would be in reverse. You would still go under the quill and over the quill. Let's grab this. thread caught. Get that off of there. To the outside of your thread. You may want to re-wax your thread periodically. Especially if you're using thinner thinner thread on um, 
finer quills, they can get frayed and then break. Okay, here we go under and over. A little back stitch. Go to the outside of the thread. Pull it snug, but not real tight. Under, over. Probably about an eighth of an inch. Maybe a little more. Under, over. Okay. Now you go ahead and practice this. I'm going to finish the line work. I am going to uh, finish coming down through here and then I'm going to do these scallops in white. Then um, next time you see me we will be assembling the sheath and the inner sheath. Alrighty. Um, I decided it was just too much for one video to show the construction of the inner sheath. So I'll do that on another video. But uh, this sheath has a nice firm inner sheath so it can be used as a, a belt sheath. And um, on the other portion of the videos we did the zigzag and the line work. And I've started doing the edging. Now, to get started, you'll want to cut out um, a piece of rain tan that is the length of the knife sheath with probably on the ends, you want at least five inches extra. So you can put, um, you can put some hair cones on those when you're finished. And then to get started, you'll want to secure the end of the brain tan thong, sew it down to the tip of the knife sheath, and then sew um, down your first quill to start your edging. And I've already started, I've marked out the pattern that I want, so we'll go from here and see if you can, can see this. I'm changing colors right now, and I'll choose a green quill, and if you can see this, you insert it under the brain tan thong through the existing stitch. Okay. Let me get this turned around where I can hold it. Get this all in place. Okay. go ahead and um, get that through there. I'm kind of crowded with my camera here. I want to move some stuff. All right. Now, push that down. And you'll want to maneuver the old quill to the back. Can you see that? And the new quill to the back. And you're going to bring the new quill to the front. I think this was the most difficult stitch to learn. A lot of the, um, or some of the quill workers don't even do it because it's kind of, it can be tricky. So if you're starting out, you just might want to do a um, line, a edge. All right, now I'm coming down in here and I'm going to go down into the brain tan on the front of the sheath, <clears throat> probably about, um, quarter of an inch in and come out at an angle on the back. Okay. Trying to do this slowly. And you don't you want your thread laying on the back of the sheath, not over any coils on the back. Pull that really firmly and hold it with your other hand. Now you you might want to snug that up a little bit. They should be very close. Now go ahead and put this to the back. 
bring it back to the front, go under your brain tan thong, under your quill, and about a quarter of an inch, go to the back of the, ouch, excuse me, that's stuck through my finger. Kind of snug those up. All right, now I'm going to start another quill, and then I'm going to trim trim that off. You don't want to be poking yourself all the way through. All right, let's go ahead and you got to leave yourself enough on these to fold back to the back. So you're only going to get a couple wraps for each one. Go underneath the quill and through the thread. Get all your color at the back. Now you want to pull this string tight. Now push everything towards the back. Underneath the thong. Over it. Like that. Okay. Now go underneath it. the inside of it. Now you want to go in about a quarter of an inch through the sheath to the back. Pull it nice and tight. At this time let's go ahead and get rid of these pokey ends. Okay, okay, now you just fold it under, over. You might want to hold it with your other hand, like I'm doing. Go under the brain tan, thong, underneath the quill that you're sewing down to the inside of it. About a quarter of an inch onto that, onto your sheath. Push it to the back. through. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this off camera because I'm at a really rough angle right now, but um, that's how you do edging, and I also have it on um, the other video too. I don't know which one might be clear, it might be on the other one, but uh, that's how you do it. Thank you. As you can see, I've pretty much finished the knife sheath. Um, I made it pretty bold and with a real heavy inner lining because it's going to be a belt sheath. And it seems to fit the customer's knife really well. Everything's real nice and heavy so when he puts it in his belt, you know, it's going to hold. It's not going to bend. And that's why I chose to do a really heavy edging on it too. But I think I'm pretty well done. I'm not positive, but I'm going to let you follow me while I do the hair cones. All I did here was slip the cones right on the right on the brain tan thongs. I'm going to cut off what I think is going to be about the right amount. Of course, I chose the yellow to match the knife sheath. See, that should be about right. If you'll notice, a lot of the originals, rather than having it, <clears throat> the hair even, the top is just, just hanging over on the cone. And I'll show you when I'm finished what I, what I mean here. So let's go ahead and cut off a nice hank of a deer tail that's been dyed. 
I'm going to take a little little heavier thread because you're wanting this thread to uh, to really last and not and not pull the hairs out. We'll go ahead and thread that up and wax it. Now what you need to do is pick up your hank of hair, get it nice and even, and lay it down, start tying knots over a little, not quite the center, but this side of the center. And just I'll pull it down to make it right and then I flip it over tie it again flip it over tie it again real tight then tie another knot in that <clears throat> okay now what you want to do is pull your cone down just a little and this brain tan is so thick I don't think I'm going to need a knot in it. Most of the times you'll put a knot in it to hold everything in place but I'm going to go ahead and as you can see I'm going to pull this up through. You can see the one part shorter than the other, which was correct in many of the originals. Now all I do here is just take about three stitches through the brain tan. One, and you can add, you can go around it also. Two, depending if your brain tan's real thin, you might choose just to go around it. And through it maybe one time. So there's three, three, and now I'm gonna make another knot. Okay. Now we'll slide that right up to the quill. Cut that off, and I'll trim that closer later. Let's go ahead and get another long piece of. Uh, thread so I have room to work with it. You don't want to cheat yourself on giving your room with uh, thread and that sort of thing or it's just it's not worth saving you know a yard of thread. Okay let's go ahead and get that ready to go. You're going to want to rain tan. Make sure you wax it before you sew on the brain tan. Alright, let's go ahead and cut another nice piece of hair off. Plenty big. And I want to thank Bill for ordering another knife sheath. He had bought one from me last year, and it was a sumac, and it was either matter root or cochineal. It was one of my favorite knife sheaths, and he must have liked it because he's reordered. All right. So thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. Okay, we're wrapping that about three times. Pull it real tight, make a good knot. Okay, and I'll trim that little bit of uh, thread off later. Okay, and just like before, let's get that a little closer. Go up through your cone. Can you see that? All right, pull this nice and tight. See, all right, 
get a little further up there. You want to get it as far up as you can and so you can then hide your stitching. Okay, we're going to do this about three times. I'll do that one more time. And I don't use a glover's needle because you'll be cutting your brain tan and um, that's not a good thing. You end up cutting the little thongs right in half. So now that I did that, I'm going to scooch that up. I think it's going to be fine. Trim off. Trim all this extra thread off. it um, there's the knife sheath pretty much completed I might I might put a little stain on here to make it a little bit darker I'm not sure and um, trim up my threads a little bit but uh, there's the second quilled knife sheath in my video series I hope you've learned something and that you'll return and see me again sometime